What a day it is to be free for. Surely this is the epochal moment where the global legacy media system is being fundamentally challenged. No longer can they rein in or contain control of the narrative for the world's biggest online journalist and the leader of the globalist opposition, if you want to see it in such reductive terms, are meeting for a conversation. I'm minded of the Muhammad Ali phrase, I ain't got no beef with a Viet Cong. What exactly is your in? individual personal beef with Russia. And as Tucker says in his soon to be a poke trailer, you might watch Vladimir Putin talking to Tucker Carlson and go, I don't like this guy. I don't like his policies. In fact, I'd like to fund a war against Russia. In fact, I'd like to ensure that NATO are able to be perpetuated going forward uninterrupted. In fact, I'd like to have my children and myself conscripted into an army in order to fight against the Russian military machine. Or you might watch it and go, hang on a minute. It sounds to me like NATO knew that they were provoking Russia into a conflict and continued anyway. You might watch it and decide, hey, hang on a minute, what is this Ukrainian democracy that we are fighting for? Uh, a democracy where there's only one set of media that's allowed, a democracy where elections are cancelled. But what it's really exposed to me is the nature of propaganda, Western propaganda. Let's have a look at Tucker's, the first part of Tucker's trailer. We're in Moscow tonight. We're here to interview the president of Russia, Vladimir Putin. We'll be doing that soon. There are risks to conducting an interview like this, obviously. So we thought about it carefully over many months. Here's why we're doing it. First, because it's our job. We're in journalism. Our duty is to inform people. Two years into a war that's reshaping the entire world, most Americans are not informed. They have no real idea what's happening in this region, here in Russia or 600 miles away in Ukraine. But they should know. They're paying for much of it in ways they might not fully yet perceive. Does that seem reasonable to you? You're paying for this war through your tax dollars. You should know what it's about. Now, I, this is, I'm going to back myself here and I'm going to back you. I reckon I'll be able to watch Vladimir Putin talking to Tucker Carlson. It's not like it's, I don't know, Clint Eastwood or Brad Pitt and I'm going to get all swept. Oh my God, he's so charismatic. I don't care what he says. I'm on board. I'm going to have to watch and go, right, this guy used to be in the KGB. He's a world leader. I'm sure there's all sorts of tyranny and hypocrisy and control going on in Russia. But what he said, because you know what he's going to say. He's going to say this. I don't want Ukraine in NATO. I don't think NATO should be expanding into former Soviet territories. We want some autonomy in the Donbass region for Russian nativists and Crimeas off the table. And with that deal, because they already had a treaty before Boris Johnson, UK Prime Minister, went over there and scuppered it at the behest of Joe Biden. There was a treaty already. And we don't talk about that. Why don't we talk about that in the legacy media? Because it's not part of the agenda. They want to elevate and escalate because they are obviously partnering the military industrial complex who benefit from this war. Even your so-called border bill includes $60 billion of further aid to continue to fund this war. So we agree, right? It's okay that Tucker Carlson conducts this conversation. It's okay that we decide for ourselves whether or not we agree with what Putin is saying. And it seems that it's a pretty significant issue and warrant debate, conversation, transparency and clarity. So in this part of the video, he talks about the effects of war on the population and he talks about economy. Let's get into that. The war in Ukraine is a human disaster. It's left hundreds of thousands of people dead, an entire generation of young Ukrainians, and it's depopulated the largest country in Europe. But the long term effects are even more profound. This war has utterly reshaped the global military and trade alliances and the sanctions that followed have as well. And in total, they have upended the world economy. The post-World War II economic order, the system that guaranteed prosperity in the West for more than 80 years, is coming apart very fast, and along with it, the dominance of the US dollar. These are not small changes. They are history-altering developments. They will define the lives of our grandchildren. I suppose what Tucker's proposing there is that a conversation around epochal global 
geopolitical events that may define political, social and cultural life for generations to come warrants conversation. Are you confident that CNN, the BBC, MSNBC, the New York Times, the Trusted News Initiative and look into that organisation, are you confident that their version of events has your best interests at heart? Based on what you've seen in the global media machine, are you convinced that what they care about is the quality of your life, your freedom, your appreciation of reality, or do they, and here comes a ball right out of left field, care about control, establishing absolute control, shutting down dissent wherever it's available. Just take a glance at the hate speech laws in Ireland. Just look a, take a look at the censorship bill in Canada, in our country, the United Kingdom, proposed censorship laws in the EU. Hmm, seeing a hell of a lot of control, not seeing all of the love that one might expect to see if what we're expected to believe is that the globalist establishment is about care and concern. The next part of this conversation is about propaganda. What you're going to hear a lot of is, oh, Tucker's a propagandist. He's a Putin apologist. He's giving Putin a platform. All of that stuff that people like to try out in situations like this. I would remind you, Vladimir Zelensky went to the Golden Globes and thanked JP Morgan. Went to the Golden Globes and thanked BlackRock in Perth. Thank you, BlackRock, for your investment. Now, I'm not saying that the Ukrainian people oughtn't be protected. Of course they should. Of course, the waste of Ukrainian lives is one of the biggest consequences and biggest stains upon our global character generated by this conflict. But when you're talking about propaganda, when you see Sean Penn giving an Oscar, I mean, the, what's being propagandized is the uh, the ongoing defense of a seemingly unwinnable military conflict against an unassailable conflict that ought be curtailed at the earliest possible opportunity through diplomacy. Is that crazy? Is that crazy or is that, I don't know, common sense? Most of the world understands this perfectly well. They can see it. Ask anyone in Asia or the Middle East what the future looks like. And yet the populations of the English speaking countries seem mostly unaware. They think that as nothing has really changed. And they think that because no one has told them the truth. Their media outlets are corrupt. They lie to their readers and viewers. And they do that mostly by omission. Omission. They don't report on vital truths consistently. We know this. That's why if you're watching this on YouTube, we want you to click the link in the description and join us in the freedom speech, free speech stream that is Rumble. Not that so that we can engage in hateful language or needless cruelty or senselessness. On the contrary, I believe in your individual autonomy. I believe in your right to be who you are. I believe in your right to access information and determine and decide the truth for yourself. And that is the very thing that terrifies them. And that's why they're going into meltdown right now. For example, since the day the war in Ukraine began, American media outlets have spoken to scores of people from Ukraine, and they've done scores of interviews with Ukrainian President Zelensky. We ourselves have put in a request for an interview with Zelensky, and we hope he accepts. But the interviews he's already done in the United States are not traditional interviews. They are fawning pep sessions specifically designed to amplify Zelensky's demand that the U.S. enter more deeply into a war in Eastern Europe and pay for it. That is not journalism. It is government propaganda, propaganda of the ugliest kind, the kind that kills people. At the same time, our politicians and media outlets have been doing this, promoting a foreign leader like he's a new consumer brand, not a single... That's odd, isn't it? Promoting a foreign leader like a consumer brand. That's extraordinary. The language of commerce, the language of branding. We've been so coached in that lexicon and that vernacular that it's all we're able to see. The reductivism, the simplification of believing that a particular product that will make you, will make you feel youthful or exciting or sexy. Those, that kind of mentality is being applied at the level of global politics now. A Western journalist has bothered to interview the president of the other country involved in this conflict. Vladimir Putin. Most Americans have no idea why Putin invaded Ukraine or what his goals are now. They've never heard his voice. That's wrong. Americans have a right to know all they can about a war they're implicated in. And we have the right to tell them about it because we are Americans too. Freedom of speech is our birthright. We were born with the right to say what we believe. That right cannot be taken away no matter who is in the White House. But they're trying anyway. Almost three years ago, the Biden administration 
illegally spied on our text messages and then leaked the contents to their servants in the news media. It's amazing, they illegally spied on them. This is how it, this is how the machine functions. Illegal surveillance, spying. This is the machine that we are dealing with. This is the machine that will do anything it can to shut down dissenting voices and then claims it's doing it for your benefit. Thank God we're able to freely stream here on this platform where free speech is a sacred right and certainly a legal right. They did this in order to stop a Putin interview that we were planning. Last month, we're pretty certain they did exactly the same thing once again. But this time, we came to Moscow anyway. Mm. Pretty bold, brave stuff there. I mean, what they'll say on the Legacy Media is, oh, it's not brave because Tucker knows he'll get a favorable audience. But what does that matter? All we're really asking, it's pretty basic, is would you like to hear the perspectives of Vladimir Putin before endorsing a $188 billion bill that's calling itself a border bill when $60 billion of that funding is going to the Ukraine, when you know Ukraine's democracy is pretty dubious. They're cancelling elections, even though Joe Biden won't debate. Nobody won't turn up in his own primaries, even though we're censoring and shutting down information and using the CIA to prime media organisations to ignore true stories about laptops that are dubious. So this is Jen Psaki. Now remember that Jen Sake. Firstly, this is not judgment of anyone of a human being. I believe in God. I believe in the Lord. I love the light. I'm trying to be a better person. Jen Saki, as far as I'm concerned, she's an expression of absolute divinity. My concern is that as a former White House press correspondent and secretary. She ain't able to be all that objective. Look at the condemnation of the Tucker Carlson interview. You're going to love this. It'd be worth asking yourself, since it is getting pretty serious, what is this really about? Why do I hate Putin so much? Has Putin ever called me a racist? Has he threatened to get me fired for disagreeing with him? So why does permanent Washington hate him so much? If you've been watching the news, you know that Putin is having a border dispute with a nation called Ukraine. Border dispute is certainly one way to characterize a major military invasion. Even that first point of saying using the word border dispute or the term border dispute is disingenuous and misleading. That's an astonishing approach because in the legacy media analysis of this conflict, you won't hear any talk of the 2014 coup. You won't hear any talk of NATO's role in provoking Russia. Even Jan Stoltenberg, as you know, said that Putin made it explicitly clear that expansion into former Soviet territory or an attempt to get Ukraine to join NATO would be met with military action. You can say that's wrong all day long. Then you should probably have a look at whether or not you feel it's possible for Ukraine to win a war against Russia, whether or not you want to fund it through your tax dollars, whether or not you want conscription in the country you live in, and whether or not you can rely on the legacy media Media who decry what they call propaganda while simultaneously propagandizing an issue. Of course, Carlson is now just another far-right conspiracy peddler with a show on the internet who's no longer on Fox, as we all know. Do you know, like, how disingenuous that is? They panic all the live long day about the power of online and independent media. They are terrified. They realize the jig is up. They're falling apart. Their views are falling. Their influence is crumbling. Their ability to control your consciousness, to manipulate your attention, to shut you down is waning. They're panicking. So being derisory, like, and what about the rest of the time? Like, this is an MSNBC host. When they talk about Fox normally, I hate Fox News. They loathe Fox News. Now that Tucker's not on Fox, she attempts to use that as a type of slur, as if Fox were a badge of honor, an endorsement, a kind of blue chip organization. No. And he's apparently been spending the last few days in Moscow for some reason. Who knows? We don't know why. He has to stay relevant somehow. So I guess we'll learn in the coming days, maybe. But his position on Putin and Russia's invasion of Ukraine, one that would have been antithetical to Republican orthodoxy less than a decade ago, has apparently... That's a really interesting point, that Jen Psaki is complaining that the Republican Party are no longer hawkish enough. Ten years ago, we had wars for any reasons. Ten years ago, it didn't matter if you had weapons of mass destruction or not. We were coming for you. Astonishing. Yeah, and someone's pointed out, stay relevant. That that is an like as if Tucker Carlson needs to stay relevant. We're doing a news show on him doing a news show. What he's doing is manipulating, ordering 
shifting the way that news is conveyed. In a way, I'm really glad they said that because that's one of the attacks they use on me. Russell Brand, I always feel a bit hurt by that. Like, oh God, am I trying to stay relevant? Is that what I'm trying to do? But actually, I realise what I'm trying to do is participate in truth. What I'm actually trying to do is participate as best I can in the elevation of our collective consciousness to create conditions where we can freely disagree with one another. We become now the majority view within the party. Because Republicans in Congress have been delaying additional aid to Ukraine since October. Today, House Republican leadership rejected any possibility of voting for the Senate's bipartisan compromise bill that would have provided funding for Ukraine, Israel and the U.S. border. It's the compromise bill. There's something for everyone. 60 billion for Ukraine. It's ex astonishing to suggest that these issues are not tan at least tangentially connected. Tucker Carlson is interviewing Vladimir Putin to hear what Russia's perspective on war and potentially peace is, while a bill is have struggling to be passed that includes $60 billion of additional military aid for Ukraine. It's hardly irrelevant. We want to remain prosperous and free. We paid for this trip ourselves. We took no money from any government or group, nor are we charging people to see the interview. It is not behind a paywall. Anyone can watch the entire thing shot live to tape and unedited on our website, TuckerCarlson.com. Elon Musk, to his great credit, has promised not to suppress or block this interview once we post it on his platform, X, and we're grateful for that. Western government the Elon Musk Tucker Carlson axis is a terrifying thing for the legacy media and the globalist establishment. Between them, they get access to interviews like this one between Putin and Tucker Carlson and through Musk and his determination to keep X a free speech space now have the ability to broadcast unedit unedited, which I think is a really bold move, and ux unexpurgated content. You won't get that from the legacy media. Now, if like people are saying, well, you know, MSNBC have applied to interview Putin and he refused, well, maybe because he might imagine that the interview would be manipulated and used in order to generate particular outcomes. Just for a moment, consider that YouTube have banned Russia Today. Russia Today is just like, you know, CNN or BBC. It's just state media of Russia. Of course, it will give you a favorable perspective of the agenda of Russia. And then you as an individual go, well, seems pretty pro-Russian, this take on the news, but then it's Russia Today. But what they pretend is, is that MSNBC or CNN or Fox are being objective about the news. This is the objective perspective. What you're going to get from Tucker Carlson is a American Patriots perspective on a conflict that could potentially be ended a lot more easily if the agenda were not to continue it, but to reach a diplomatic, peaceful solution that will be beneficial to everybody significantly and perhaps even mostly Ukrainian people. Governments, by contrast, will certainly do their best to censor this video on other less principled platforms because... That's what they do. They are afraid of information they can't control. Odium LXV points out that Russia today is on Rumble. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Rumble can't be on in France anymore because France in their mad Macron globalist new era doesn't want free speech. That's why I'm always saying to you lot, be nice to each other in the chat. Because if people look at the Rumble chat and everyone's just going, freedom, I don't care what religion you are, I believe in your freedom. I don't care what your identity is, I believe in your freedom. They'll go, oh no, these people are amazing, they're the future. When they look in there and it's like, I hate people who read that book or wear that hat or that shawl. And it's like, see, it's full of hate speech. We have to be better. We have to be better. Oh, but you have no reason to be afraid of it. We are not encouraging you to agree with what Putin may say in this interview, but we are urging you to watch it. You should know as much as you can. And then, like a free citizen and not a slave, you can decide for yourself. Thanks. Like a free citizen and not a slave. And isn't that what's at the heart of this, isn't it? Let's have a look at some of the uh, headlines that this has generated. Uh, Tucker Carlson announces an interview. He's praised the Russian leader for years, says Rolling Stone. Tucker Carlson is in Russia to interview Putin. He's already doing the bidding of the Kremlin. Tucker Carlson interviews Putin in Moscow after years of anti-Ukraine vitriol. This is very deliberate editorialization. 
Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to see more uncensored content where free speech can flourish, join our live stream. Click the link right here to watch the next video if you want to, or become a member of a growing movement. Download the Rumble app and you'll be informed every time we make a new piece of content. Stay free.